happy Monday to you. Welcome back out to the front porch. Time once again for another episode of Monday Meditations. I hope you're enjoying this study of Proverbs as much as I am. It's good to be with you again, and I hope you have your Bibles open to chapter 4 of Proverbs. We'll be looking at the first few verses of this for our Monday meditation today. Thinking about that, I want you to consider the idea of an old saying, so goes the home, so goes the government, so goes the world. The home is the first institution that God ordained. And the wise man in this great book, he he starts the book talking specifically to his son, but he opens it up a little more broad in chapter four here, looking more so at a at a more broad spectrum of parenting and, and the parent relationship with the child and the passing on information and passing on wisdom that is, of course, a key to the book of Proverbs as well. Let's go ahead and dig into this idea of thinking of, of the relationship of parenting and instruction and see what the wise man has to say to us on which we can meditate this Monday. First of all, look at verse 1. says, Hear ye children the instruction of a father and attend to no understanding. Hear ye children. Hear is a, is a relative term in some ways. We, I hear sounds all around me. I hear birds singing. I've heard chainsaws in the neighborhood. I heard a plane fly over just a few moments ago. I hear cars driving by. I hear the sound of the wind and this beautiful day. All of those sounds coming together and the nature that's around us and the hustle and bustle of the world around us. You hear those things. Sometimes I hear voices. I hear those voices of people in the neighborhood maybe speaking. I hear them but I don't understand them. They're too far away and it's too faint. Sometimes even in my own home, I'll hear someone say something, but I don't understand what they're saying. Maybe they're in a different room, maybe they're upstairs and you hear them, but you don't understand. That's this idea of hear ye children is incline your ear to this, point your ear toward, make sure you're paying attention to, to what? The instruction, the teaching, the guidance, yea, the experience. Of your what of your father but not only the father also he says attend again focus give your attention to to know understanding to make sure that you're going to grasp and understand exactly what's being said you could sum up this verse with these words pay attention something important is about to be said he says first of all here in verse 2 for I give you good doctrine forsake ye not my law I give you good doctrine in the sense that this is proven doctrine. This is sure. This is steadfast. This is something on which you can hang your hat and trust. This is confidence building. This is success building. He says, I give you good doctrine, proven doctrine, but don't forsake my law. And this is a parenting concept that God had in mind from the beginning. The first institution we've already noted is that he created is that of the home. Adam and Eve in the garden, with Cain and Abel, their children. And, and we know how things happened in the garden. We know that this sin transpired. We know that Cain killed Abel, that there was dysfunction and problems. People not listening to the father to begin with, and God being the, the ultimate father. And that's what we need to be doing as well. He would make this very clear in the law of Moses. And you see this in Deuteronomy chapter 6, verses 6 through 9. He tells them that there's to be one God in their lives, one God and one God alone. But they're to teach that to their children when they rise up, when they walk by the way, when they lie down at night, every aspect of the day, every opportunity that they have to teach that, to pass that on to that next generation, to help them to see this truth to help them not forsake the law. And when he says my law, the law he's talking about, the law of just the Father, well, there's a sense in which that is, but this is more so the law that comes from the Father. The law that is, is being handed down, what Solomon is offering, is what parents ought to be offering. Not just as Solomon would offer, say, to his son, but as every father should be offering to every son. But this is interesting. He doesn't put the burden solely upon the father in this to teach this instruction. Look at verse 3. He says, For I was my father's son, tender and only beloved in the sight of my mother. See, he ties the mother and the father together in this. They're working together. But he's also saying in this verse, I speak from experience. I myself was once where you are. 
That's something when we were children and their children sometimes today fail to grasp and, and appreciate and realize that mom and dad were once young, that mom and dad were once children too, that mom and dad were once facing pressures that they're facing, facing temptations that they're facing, growing pains that they're going through. The compulsion to disobey mom and dad or to not see the validity in what they're trying to teach us. He said, I was my father's son. I was tender and only beloved in the sight of my mother. Some looking at this kind of reference, this idea of the one and only son idea. He had more sons. David had more sons than Solomon. Bathsheba had more sons than Solomon, but this was a, an outstanding son. This was a one that stood out. This was a faithful one. It reminds me also of the idea of Genesis 22 and verse 2 where God says to Abram to take thine son Isaac, thine only son Isaac, whom thou lovest, and offer him as an offering. And when you think about that, he had another son. He had Ishmael at that point, but that wasn't the son of promise. That wasn't the son that he was dis discussing in the Hebrew in this sense. The one, and I, I don't want to say that the one that matters, <laughs> that's not really a fair uh, way of looking at it. God took care of Ishmael as well. But it's the idea of the, God, of the son of promise, the one that was unique. And this is how Solomon was to David as well. And he learned from his father. Look at verse 4. He says, He taught me also and said unto me, Let thine heart re retain my words, keep my commandments, and live. He taught me also like I'm trying to teach you, like a father tries to teach his son going on and going on throughout the generations. I was taught by my father who was taught by his father and so forth. Pass it on. That's the idea that he's looking at, but I want you to think back to this. Every son should appreciate the opportunity to learn from the experiences of a loving father. Solomon, his father was King David, a standout of kings of Israel arguably one of the greatest, if not the greatest, king of Israel. There could be some, some debate over to whether or not Solomon would become the greatest, but still, David is still held in high esteem today as being that great conqueror, that great leader, the man after God's own heart even. What, a, what an example. Now, you know as well as I do, if you've studied your Bible any at all, that David made some grave mistakes. And David would teach his son those mistakes as well. The scriptures have written down the good and the bad of David's life. Solomon was given wisdom by God above. Solomon's life has the good and the bad as well. His son chooses poorly after him. We make mistakes. We fail sometimes to follow. But the advice still holds true. Learn to listen Learn to hold true. Listen to what he says again. He taught me to, said unto me what? And to let thine heart retain my words. Not just to hear these words, but to hold on to these words. To keep his commandments always. It's a continual idea of keeping his commandments. And what would be the end result of that? He will live. Now an example of this in the scripture when this was done is First Chronicles chapter 28 and verse 9. If you'll turn over there with me and look at it. 1 Chronicles chapter 28, verse 9, and listen to the words of David to Solomon, his son. And thou, Solomon, my son, know thou the God of thy father, and serve him with a perfect heart and with a willing mind. For the Lord searcheth the hearts and understandeth all the imaginations of the thoughts. If thou seek him, he will be found of thee. But if thou forsake him, he will cast thee off forever. Take heed now, for the Lord hath chosen thee to build an house for the sanctuary, to be strong and to do it. 9 and 10. Solomon, you've got an awesome blessing passed upon you. An opportunity to build the house of the Lord. Something that David, his father, longed to do. But he was a man of blood. He was a man of war. He said, Solomon, you seek the Lord. You give your heart to Him. You don't forsake Him. Because if you do, He'll cast you off forever. And so here is this man now, having made mistakes himself, yes. Having 
done very, very poorly with the wisdom that God gave him, as you see in the Ecclesiastes letter, telling parents, telling sons and daughters, do the right thing. Hold on to the Word of God. Hold on to the law of God. Incline your ear to that understanding. Make sure that you get that understanding. You hold that understanding. You hide the Word in your heart that you might not sin against Him. Psalm 119 tells us that very clearly. And so when we think about so goes the home, so goes the nation, so goes the world, what is our home looking like? Is it a home where children are listening to the commandments of godly fathers and mothers? Where parents are working together to strive to make the God of heaven and earth the God of their lives? When we do that, we're going to be a blessing to the world around us. And we'll do just as Solomon said in this first part of our reading. We'll live. We'll have hope. We'll have a hope of an eternal life with God. And that's something on which we can meditate this Monday and every day. May God bless you till we meet again.